Hello everyone, welcome to the session. So in this particular video, we will talk about central limit theorem. I believe that until so far, whatsoever concepts we have covered up so far is pretty much clear to everyone, right? I would say that after completion of this video, uh, we are com we are done with the you know easy to intermediate part of the stats. And from the, from the next part of the video, I'll start discussing about the intermediate to advanced part of the stats, which is required in data science, where we will talk about confidence interval, where we will talk about, you know, hypothesis testing, the concept of p-values and all those stuffs will come into picture. So first of all, let's uh, try to understand the central limit theorem. Okay. So what this theorem says, this is really, really important theorem, first of all, and this theorem usually asked in a lot of interviews of data science. This theorem is quite simple to understand if you will, you will try to relate this theorem with the real life applications. Okay. So here, if you will try to observe what is usually happening here is that this theorem says that if suppose you will be having a random sample, okay, random data, random set of data points that you have, and suppose this x belongs to a Gaussian distribution. Suppose this x belongs to a, I would say Gaussian distribution or normal distribution. I believe everyone knows one and the same thing. So this is a data point which belongs to Gaussian distribution where what we are saying that uh, the mean is mu and the variance is sigma square, right? Now, then there is a, another data point, data sample, which we have, data points that we have, which doesn't belongs to something called as a Gaussian distribution or a normal distribution. Means it belongs to any other distribution. It can be anything, but this is for sure that they are not belonging to a Gaussian, you know, distribution. And you don't even know that which distribution they are belonging. Now, you don't know what is the value of mu, so obviously in that case, the value of mu and the variance will be different, right? So, so one set of data sample is there, which belongs to a Gaussian distribution. One data sample is there, which doesn't belong to a Gaussian distribution. Doesn't matter whatsoever data sample you picked up. If you will take from this complete population that you have, for example, in this population, you will be having a one lakh of records. And from those one lakh records, suppose you are picking up a sample of that data points. Maybe the sample size is uh, 50, is approximately equals to 50. So what you did, you took a sample, which is, you are saying X1, and you are picking up maybe 50 data points out of the complete population that you have is capital X. It may be X1, X2, X7, until maybe there are in total 50 number of data points that you have and you try to find out the mean of this x1 which is coming out to be a sample mean which is equals to x1 bar similarly you repeatedly do, did this similar task again in x2 you pick up pick out 50 samples again x10 and so on maybe x47 you again picked up a 50 number of samples and tried to find out the mean of that and this similar thing you are doing for this X as well as for Y. In both of the cases, doesn't matter that whether they are belonging to a Gaussian distribution or not. What you are trying to do is you're trying to pick up the 50 samples and maybe this process you keep on doing, 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 doing until how many number of times maybe you are doing the same step until 100 number of times. Okay. Again, here also, you will be able to pick up few random samples that you have until maybe X hundred. And in this case, again, you will be able to get a sample mean X hundred bar. Now, in this case, what I'm doing is at each and every time I'm trying to pick up a 50 number of samples in our complete population that we have, which belongs to now this X one, X two, until X hundred sample samples, which I did, they can either belongs to capital X or they belongs to Y that we have. I'm saying means whether the distribution is Gaussian or it is not Gaussian doesn't matter to me. Even if I'm not aware about what kind of distribution it is, 
it is giving me a surety central limit theorem says that if you will try to plot this x1 bar x2 bar until x100 bar on a histogram so you will try to do a plot on a histogram you will try to create one histogram of what of maybe the values of a sample mean that you are getting you will observe that you will always be getting a normal distribution you will always be getting a bell shape curve you will always get this bell shape curve according to the central limit theorem doesn't matter whether it belongs originally to a gaussian distribution or not in central limit theorem when you will repeat this maybe 100 number of times taking the value of x1 bar x2 bar until the value of x100 bar and you will try to plot it in a histogram you will always get a normal distribution that is the key point that is something is really important for you to understand as a part of a clt central limit theorem central limit theorem makes sense i hope it is it is pretty much clear to everyone what i am saying here in such a way that when you will usually take this kind of a you know a uh, sample mean and try to plot it on a histogram you will observe that you will be able to get a plot where the you will get exactly the mean as mu but the variance is equals to sigma square by capital small n where n indicates the sample size for example in this case i am saying that the sample size that we are picking up is approximately equals to 50 so this always follows a normal distribution where this is the mean that you always get and this is the variance that you will always get now the clt theorem holds true again it's experimentally proven when the value of n is bigger than greater than or equal to 30 at that moment this theorem will state will hold true similar here if you will observe that's why we have picked up the value of ns approximately equals to 50 which is a bigger value as comparable to 30 so that is something which you need to take care of here okay now you can ask me one simple question that okay priya we will be able to understand that what clt is all about but the question is that why we are studying this what's the reason behind that where we are, we are using this theorem in real life very simple in economics very simple example i want to state for a real life scenario i want to check that what is the average income what is the average income or salary of people may be staying in you know rotak a small area i would say city in haryana so i want to see that what is the average income of the people staying in rotak so what i will do here is that i will not work for the complete population obviously that is huge what i will do is i'll take a sample of the data and i'll repeat this maybe 100 number of times and will try to find out the mean at each and, each and every point of time now i'm pretty sure that x1 bar x2 bar x3 bar until so on until x100 bar when i will do the same thing repeatedly finding out the sample mean after some point of time whatever be the value of actual mean after plotting it i am getting is the value of mu which is the average income of a rotak area completely even though i haven't deal with the complete population i deal with the sample only but i repeatedly did this task and i took the sample size which is bigger than 30 value and this is how via a clt theorem via a clt theorem i can easily able to make a judgment that what should be the what should be the average income right so always remember we always deal with the sample data we always get a result or the conclusion from the sample data and this sample data whatever result we are getting we always say that this holds true for a complete population data as well that is something which i always say 
that is something which i always say whenever we are dealing with the stats i think the very first session is the session itself where i was talking about these concepts concepts that what is the difference between a population and a sample now here which kind of sampling technique we can use to get a samples in this particular circumstances maybe you can apply a simple random sampling technique now i hope you all know that there are so many different kinds of techniques that we have right accordingly we can th we can think of that which particular sampling technique we can apply but in this scenario i think random sampling technique will also work so with this the complete clt theorem is completed and again this is one of the very important theorem with respect to the interviews as well there are very high chances that if you are going for an interview uh, for data science at least i can share my experience uh, i have applied to a lot of companies with respect to the data science position and there are a lot of companies which ask me this clt theorem and where this is useful in real life applications usually people know that what clt theorem all about but they will not able to explain with the help of a real life example so you can you can talk about this kind of examples uh where you can demonstrate that okay this theorem is really applicable over there right if you have anything apart from this to share please ping in the comment section i will for sure try to respond it as soon as possible apart from that i believe this uh, this is the very last video of this year and uh, uh the new video will come on the new year so uh i just want to say uh happy new year to everyone right whatsoever things you have dreamed of i just pray to god that everyone will be able to achieve whatsoever he or she is thinking in her head or in his head right please stay focused work really hard and believe me nothing is impossible in this world spend your time very much consciously right uh, i have seen a lot of people who thinks that who think that the time is free you know but i would say the time is not free time is really valuable it will not come again so spend your time very wisely with your loved ones with your dreams right don't spend your time in doing anything which is not worth of right so with this happening to all bye bye everyone and i'll see you all in 2023